We reached the end of 2020 in a few days, and I'm hoping that it will bring in a better year. I'm also aware, however, that the circumstances of the world don't necessarily revolve around arbitrary timestamps. For me, this year has been more about gratitude and appreciating what I have. For many others, this was a year full of heartbreak and frustration. This exercise isn't a recommendation for anyone else. It was simply an endeavor I chose to pursue, and if it helps you too, then all the better. On May 5th of 2020, I was accepted into the medical school I'm currently attending. The path to become a physician is by no means an easy one, and I knew that in conjunction with how the year had been panning out, I would have to take steps to preserve my own mental health. There's research showing that gratitude is associated with greater happiness. Correlation doesn't equate to causation, but given that practicing gratitude only takes a few minutes per day, I figured, why not? So that day, I started jotting down three things for which I was grateful for daily. The only rule I set for myself is that I wasn't allowed to undermine anything I wrote down with any negative statements. For example, if I had fought with my parents that day, I wasn't allowed to write, even though they annoy me sometimes, I'm grateful that they provide for me. Instead, I was only allowed to jot down all that I was grateful for, without conditions, expectations, or other intentions. This didn't mean that I didn't experience negative emotions or that unfortunate situations didn't occur. It just meant that I didn't allow them to taint my gratitude. So I would process my negative emotions and temporarily set them aside for later while I did my gratitude exercise. After I was finished, I would return to the negative emotions. Sometimes they were the same, a substantial weight that refused to leave me, other times, the mere act of shifting to a glass half-full perspective had helped relieve the burden, even if only by a little. In a sense, sometimes I felt guilty for feeling sad because I knew that compared to other people, my struggles were not terrible. Similarly, I also felt guilty for writing down things that I was grateful for when the world seemed to be in such a terrible state. I felt like I was focusing on the positive and almost being naive and ignorant about the world. But then I reminded myself that constantly being negative and cynical doesn't do any favors for my mental health, and it certainly doesn't do any favors for the world. By deliberately seeking to express my gratitude even when I was feeling down, I took steps to preserve my mental health as much as possible, which will make it easier for me to help others because I had helped myself first. Sometimes it felt really difficult because my mind was in such a negative place that it almost felt like I was being fake or forcing myself to be something I wasn't. But it was a good reminder that no matter how things seem to be, it can always get worse. This year was a very good example of that. So it's always good to think of all the things that are going well for me, even if it's something like having access to drinkable water or having air in my lungs. These are things that I sometimes take for granted because they're so ubiquitous in my life. But unfortunately, not everyone has that. It truly helps to put my concerns into perspective when I think about others.
To summarize, this gratitude exercise wasn't anything significant or life-changing, but it was a bit of a challenge, and it served as a good reminder that I should always try to look for the silver lining, regardless of how dark the clouds seem to be. The original goal was to express gratitude for 100 days, but given that it only takes a few minutes each day, I continued with it after taking a short break. I hope that this video has encouraged you to practice more gratitude in your own life. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you another Sunday. Until then, I surely hope that you will take care of your health.